you want? Well, what dying. you want? <laughs> what, 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 what you want? So those are those. That's all I got. Wow. That's all I got. Can't sing. Can't rap. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. What is that? What is that? I uh, can't sing. I, can't dance. Stop remember, it. Remember Genesis? About Stop it. Remember Genesis, well, right? Wow. And some, uh, the, the video game console? No, 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 oh, no. The, yeah. the, the group, the group yeah. with... Uh, God, well, I can't think of his name. Phil Who's Collins. Phil Collins. Collins. Yes, yeah. dude. Come on, bro. I know everything. Doug, you know what you should... Can, you should be able to... <laughs> Justin hates it. Fucking <laughs> roll my eyes through these shitty sunglasses. <laughs> Where'd you get those sunglasses? Uh, uh, Joeyswell.com. I stole them from Shreds. They're the most, they're the most be, reflective glasses if, I've ever seen. If we go to yeah. any more of those those silly fitness conventions, we will we should go. No, I'm steal going hard. I'm going hard with this. Yeah, all the way in. I'm just gonna walk hard in the with paint. a bandana and in a bag, like a gym bag and some shakers. And a weight and a, <laughs> and a hey, you're my people. And a pink shaker cup yeah. that they have. Yeah, that's tough. And a weight belt. Tough. Back. You know, just you know, I'm I'm fitnessy. Hey, tell, tell us about our promotion. What are we gonna do this month? What this we, month? What are we giving away this month? Every month we do something cool, right? We give something away. Well, here's the thing. Uh, April's a special month for us. Uh, it's a big month for us because it's one year from when we started to really run this as a business. You know, one, one year, right? So mm-hmm. for this uh, one year anniversary, for the celebration. Monumental I, moment. I think we should give away a lot of things. I agree. Yeah. I think we should give away a lot of things. Okay, so like uh, we're it's I, like a thank you, everybody. Like like a like a you, this is everything you need for the year of period. Training. Yeah. Like everything. Yeah, from like you're nu- done. From, from nutrition you're to the app stuff up. to Some. everything. Okay, so lay it on me. So here's what you do: either you enroll in the RGB bundle, which includes Maps Anabolic, Maps Performance, or Maps Aesthetic. That's nine months of exercise programming. Or you enroll in the Maps Super Bundle, which also includes Maps Anywhere. That's the Extra equipment free maps program and also includes maps prime. And what we're going to do is if you enroll in either one of those bundles, we will give you for free, for free, the no BS six pack formula and the nutrition guide, fasting guide bundle. So you're going to get all your nutrition stuff and the ab, the no BS six pack formula for free for enrolling in one of those. Plus the fasting guide that comes with it. That's free. Plus when you get that, you get 50% off the forum access, which is huge. You will get that offer. Uh, Here's the cool thing, too, about the nutrition fasting bundle. In the near future, we're looking to upgrade that, which means once you own it, you're going to get it updated automatically. Yeah, we're in the process Mm -hmm. of right now. So probably in the next probably 30 to 60 days. Huge promotion. Go to mindpumpmedia.com and sign up. If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. You guys like berries, right? I do like berries. Do you know what one of my favorite berries is? What's that? A lie berry. Oh, a lie berry. Adam, Adam introduced You know where lie. I learned to most lie. of my information? <laughs> At the library. Yeah. <laughs> Adam's like, You know hey, what? Can hey we kids, put that can we put are, that in a bottle? You guys are on a little hot streak here fucking with me, you know? <laughs> that, it's, this ain't good for your health. Hey kids, welcome it's to Adam's Adam library juice. Lie berry. Ooh, Doug what? says we're going to do a start doing a little put segment, a little segment cup. like that now. <laughs> is he really? Yeah, yeah. A little sippy yeah. cup of the library. Hey mom, or, is a library like a library? <laughs> yes, honey. It's almost like a Library. Except you can eat it. Except and it smells except like Adam. Everything's spelled wrong. <laughs> Adam's library. <laughs> Where you get there and you're like, what? I didn't know it was spelled that way. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Dang. Yeah. Woo. I love it. For the first time in mind pump history. Mm-hmm. Adam is silent. He, yeah, he's no. I'm he's trying researching. to. Sh- I, I got to shoot Dom. If I if not if I don't do this now, I'll forget. If I don't send Dom a message on when we can release his episode. Do you mm. think that uh, because he works for the government that now we're being monitored by the NSA? Of course we, talk to we him? are. Yeah. Fuck. Well, yeah. Are you worried though? Well, yeah. You are. Have you seen some of the stuff I look up online? Yeah, but like I, you in comparison to like a, a politician, you know. That's how I look at it. Really? Yeah. So the way you, way worse. So the way you judge your I like you see I like your morality gauge. Yeah. So the way you judge your morality is based on hmm. human scum. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So well, like, human scum rules the world. Yeah. So, so yeah. like you so like you steal something and you're like yeah, but at least I'm not stealing yeah, everything. You know, like there's worse people. Yeah, you trip yeah. a kid. At least I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Like, I like that. I feel bad about it. You know, a lot of people don't. You do feel bad about it? If I trip a kid. When's the, la- <laughs> when, when's the last time you did something you felt bad about, Justin? <laughs> um, 
Wow. I I mean, on here, on confessional, pelting some poor girl with acorns. I, yeah, but that was... That one sucked. Hold on a second. That was a long time ago. That yeah, was when was, you were a kid. Let's we be clear. Right. I don't want the audience to be like, the this last motherfucker, time I <laughs> as an adult... I still do that. like, hey, look yeah. at that kid over there. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> blast, yeah. blast, blast I don't have to think thing. about that. When was the last time your inner asshole came out? My inner... Uh, That's when, he, when he was constipated. Oh wait, a minute. Pro, yeah. we're talking. We're not talking literally. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Probably when I like raged on this Home Home Depot lady. Be- what? Yeah, because she was like, she was giving my wife a hard time about like, um, like, like checking for like getting somebody out there to check if we had asbestos underneath our uh, tiles, and and she was just being a total bitch to my wife, and so I got on the phone and I just fucking let her have it, you know, and like. Like, What'd you say to her? Oh, I told I, her I, she's I being can't. unprofessional and like she's, you know, like you don't talk that way to people. Like I'm gonna call Ooh, your manager. You're like, so mean. <laughs> you sound like you sound like an angry mom. Went, went back to went that back to Sears. Sound very tough, did it? <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm talking about? Damn. Keep it up. I'm gonna put your name on the board. Listen, I really scolded her. <laughs> you're, so, like, you're a horrible human being. You're no, so I didn't even say that though. Uh, yeah, that was weak, bro. I don't know, man. I mean, you did, when's the last time you made somebody? I don't cry? want to talk about like my fight stories or any of that. No, bullshit, I'm just talking about the same last time you did something where you're like, God, I kind of feel bad mm. about what I did. Let yeah. me like come back to me, dude. I I don't have like examples. Bro, like, we're trying to we're trying to help you with this. Work on your self awareness here, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Dude, work on you work on getting in touch with. I'm that. sure I did it. Of course just, you did. I'm yeah, sure you did. Just, I'm sure you did one fucking I, in the last two days. I, probably. I guarantee you did something yeah. this morning. I did. You didn't do anything. You didn't do anything in the uh, during your. Sh- I mean, you had a long day of shooting the other day where you had to shoot for Kickstarter for like fifteen hours. You yeah, did. well, I definitely yeah, I dragged I mean, yeah. dragged that one out on people. You know, like uh, everybody around me were. <laughs> <laughs> They're trying to help me out. Well, here, okay. So here's the problem with that. Uh, I wrote this whole script with with uh, with the guy that was like kind of the project manager, and we we had it all lined up. And you know, I've been so busy doing shit like all over the place that I, I was supposed to either memorize most of it. I, I think that he thought I was going to memorize this, and I'm like, yeah, I can go on camera and like kind of spit a lot of this out, but. Like I was thinking we we're going to have a teleprompter and this was going to make it a lot easier because I could just like, you know, I could read it. I could say it like this was going to happen. And, and he's like, no, nah, we're not going to use that. And so uh, so he kept trying to kind of coach me with it. And oh, my God, it was just like I, I could do a couple of them really good. And then it just got to a point where like my brain was fried and, and it was just taking like 20, 30 takes before I could finally get one. It was painful. dude. I asked him if he gave him a whole new appreciation for what Sal does. He says, nah, that shit's easy, bro. Yeah. If I have a teleprompter, <laughs> if I got a teleprompter, that shit's easy. Yeah, man. That you know, shit, you know, Sal's... it's harder with a teleprompter. Yeah. Yeah, you think so? It's, yeah, I know yeah, so. Okay. If I just get up there and bullshit, that's like my, my you can't wheelhouse. bullshit though. No, that's, that's different. If I could have got up there and just bullshitted, that'd have been fine. It it it's li- like literal like lines that you had to why, memorize and spit. Why back. don't you share your whole process? I think people are extremely interested in what's going on with the axon stick and what you're going through and like what this has been like this whole, you know, Kickstarter. Because I I mean you know I've looked into it before and had no desire to go this route and just it looks like a lot of fucking work and stressful oh and money yeah. and. All and, the above. and uncertainty and like, all where, the I mean, where's your head at with all this, dude? Well, I think that um, it's you, you could see it tangibly. If I like made money and and I wanted to to pour it back and you know upgrade my car or you know for me I have this <laughs> lingering like issue with my teeth where I'm like, oh my god, it's like 10, 15 grand I'm gonna have to spend on my teeth. But all this money that I've I've kind of kept to. Uh, sort of upgrade things in my environment like I've poured into this project. And uh, so it, it's been really taxing on, on me and my family and, uh, you know, on, on top of like just trying to grow a mind pump and, and, and do as much as I can here. But um, it, it, it's, it's hard, man. Like it's a long road. It, it's I, I went through two, three different inventions before we finally nailed one where I didn't run into patent issues um, and just organizing everybody's schedules and then, um, you know, writing the script and then um, getting getting all these like patents approved and then spending more money on that and then the trademarks. And now we're at a position now where I'm finally like, okay, the ball's in my court. I need to, I need to shoot this video. I need to have it convey the right message, which is which is like everything for me. I want to make sure that if somebody watches this, they get a real good understanding of the actual product, what it's, you know, what it's intended for, where I see uh, people using this in the future, um, and the impact it's going to have on the fitness community. And like, I'm really fucking passionate about this thing, 
And a lot of times it, uh, it, you know, that gets buried just because of all these different things that have to happen before I can finally uh, sort of unveil it to the world and be like, look, like this is what I've been working on. And, you know, I hope I hope you guys can see this vision I have for it. And uh, it, it it's a lot of pressure. So, yeah, it's been any, really hard. Any, any regrets? No, none. Anything you would have done differently? Nothing. Nothing. Anything you would have done differently? Because there's no way that I could have organized. Like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a doer, dude. Like, I... I, I have an idea if I if I feel like this is something that I believe in and I wholeheartedly believe in, I'm going to jump in wholeheartedly. And so, yeah, you know, like uh, spending money is tough because it's it's definitely commits you at that point. So it's it's like do or die for me. Um, do you think that necessarily is always a good thing, or do you think that's a bad thing? Would you have done anything differently the way the process this is all came out, or do you do you feel? Um, no, I think it's great timing. Actually, I think the uh the amount of energy that um you know from me stepping back out of personal training and then focusing on things that i'm passionate about as far as um, changing the way people think uh fitness wise and, and talking and conversing about that this is not one of my strengths by the way like talking on the radio like this is not something i anticipated ever doing but do i regret it no like i, I totally love it like now that I've, that I've put myself in that uncomfortable position. This is another uncomfortable position that I, I know once I get through the, the trial and tribulation of it, like I know I'm going to enjoy, um, people and their feedback with it and just watching, watching people pick it up, understand it and use it and see, see people make a difference in fitness, in th physical therapy, in chiropractic, in a lot of different arenas where I know it's applicable. So when you say great timing, are you, or do you, are you referring to great timing for yourself and your life or great timing for the tool in the market? Both. Oh, really? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You yeah. think, you think trying to do a Kickstarter campaign and build a, a, what you could potentially be a multi-million dollar business while you're building another multi-million dollar business is good timing for you? Absolutely. I oh, think you I can leverage them. Yeah, there's, <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, I think there's synergy with it. Yeah. <laughs> synergy is synergy. Wasn't that the uh, the, the the computer yeah. in uh, Gem? Gem? No, I don't know. You guys never watched Gem, the cartoon Gem? Did truly you outrageous. Some, you watch some weird shit, bro. Gem is the, truly outrageous. See? Of course truly, he knows. Of course he knows. Outrageous. He's full of worthless Whoa. information like that. There's my he boy. Reminds right me there. Of, he reminds me of my actually my best friend Justin is the same yeah. way, dude. He has this okay. ability to remember commercials I'm gonna, from like the I'm 80s. Gonna, I'm going to stump him right now. Who are the bad guys in uh, Gem? Oh, my God. Uh, uh, yeah, you are going to stump me with that. The Misfits. Boom! Damn it! Bitch! Son of a bitch! I know the girl cartoons better than you do. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> Gem? No. I don't know if I'd what be proud of that. What's, what, wrong, what's what, wrong with you? Let's well, have what, a conversation. Well, tell me a little bit about it. But so we I need understand. to get serious here. Like, what's wrong with you, bro? How can you not know what Gem is? Well, where were we? Where, she how, was like, I guarantee she was the hottest female cartoon you could ever watch. Nah, Jessica Rabbit. Oh, yeah, yeah, she was, yeah, she was right. smoking hot. You're right. Yeah. But this was on TV. It wasn't a movie. Oh, yeah. okay. And Jessica Rabbit, you were older by that point. Doesn't, doesn't what are you, you're hey, fucking she, pervert. She's still hot at 30, bro. The, you know, <laughs> I'd still hit it. No <laughs> 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 matter how old I was when that came out, I think everybody thought Jessica everybody Rabbit was Everybody wanted to bang a cartoon yeah, at one time. Yeah, right. I, I think mm. uh, people don't re truly appreciate the process that goes into... Coming up with an idea. Everybody comes up with an idea. That's the easy part. Right. But having an idea and then executing. Execution and, and is everything. And carrying it through. Yep. Um, and the challenges you get through it. Holy sh The doubt. Yeah. The money, the fucking well, fear, the risk. Especially when you're married because yeah. I've done this before, right? You've got an idea. You're going through it. You're spending money. You're spending money. And then you got your other your spouse who's supportive but at the same time is like, are you sure? Like, what's going to happen? Yeah. And then you're like, oh, fuck, if this fails, like, yeah. I've just, like, my kids aren't going to college. You know, like, that kind of, those thoughts will end up going through your mind. It's, right. It's kind of scary. Right. It's a, uh, a... And, you know, and I've gone through that multiple times, and I think that's why I'm I'm a little bit more uh, resilient to that as far as uh, my mentality and, and just my belief. Um, I could I could put money into things that I feel like, you know, this will improve my, my environment. This mm -hmm. will improve like, you know, things that, that will make things more comfortable. Are, uh, how about like, uh, like stress on yourself, like personal stress? Is it, have you been, has, have you been affected in terms of like sleep and uh, 100%. You know, really? Yeah. What do you, how does it manifest in you? Um, well, as far as stress, like it just, 
it boils up and then I, I have to, I have to deal with it in, in different ways. So does it come out like you get irritable or angry? <clears throat> I do. And so I, I, I have to like, I have to, I have to watch it and check myself as far as like how I talk to my kids and how I talk yeah. to my wife and then, uh, respond based off of the feedback and then kind of pull back and, and realize where I'm at. But I also have to communicate the fact of like when, uh, there's an intense periods that I'm going through. So, um, I look at life in terms of waves and, and waves of intensity. Mm -hmm. And so that's a good, you know, for me, like right now I'm in a wave of intensity and you're right. It's hard and, and it's uncertain, but, um, you know, and it, it, I don't know, like I, it, it's either you're going to look at it from a perspective of, uh, you know, a positive mindset as far as like th this really is something that I am passionate about. If I wasn't passionate about it, yeah, I probably would have abandoned it a long time ago mm -hmm. because the adversity with it has been really daunting. Mm -hmm. And, uh, like, you Do know, you I fought with my partners, mm -hmm. you know, and like we've had different ideas and, um, you know, like, uh, well, let me ask you this. Let's say, and I'm, I'm not putting this out there. I'm just, this is a game I play with myself when I put myself in situations uh, like you have. What if it tanks? What mm -hmm. if it does nothing? All the money you invested, you lose it. Uh, you guys break, you break up with your partners. It just becomes an idea that you had and you worked on and you spent money on and spent time on but nothing comes out of it. Will you come, can you still come out of that and think to yourself it was worth it? I can. Okay. Yeah. Then that's, see, that's the, that's the winner mindset mm -hmm. because if it, it's you, happened before, yeah, if you put yourself in a situation, <laughs> it's not like I haven't gone through that before. It's true because if you, and I've noticed that like with myself, like if I go into something thinking if this doesn't work, it won't have been worth, it wouldn't have been yeah. worth it then it's not worth it at all yeah. because the reality the reality is it might not right well and you know what i have not to, that you think it's going yeah, to yeah no i have to extend my leg out like i have to go with my with my gut and i have to you know i have to lead with with my passion and um you know this is something too that i feel <clears throat> it defines me and and my legacy as far as like if if i have ideas personally uh and i'm not pursuing these ideas then I'm fucking dead and I don't want to be dead. I want to be, I want people to at least understand where I'm coming from with this idea and present it in a way where it's tangible and executing it. Mm -hmm. So I have to get to the end where I, I executed all the way through. And then if they give me the feedback that, no, nah, we don't want this. This isn't a tool that I feel I'm going to benefit from. So be it. But you know what? In my, in I, my mind, I can't. I can't I imagine like people. Is. I don't. Can't imagine people saying that at all. I don't. I, I don't think it's a tool that someone wouldn't benefit. I think it's incredibly revolutionary. It does remind me a lot of, um, you know, when I was a part of the the. And I don't know if I've shared this on the show or not. When I Your chair, yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah, on the show. I don't know. I know. I talked long to you, time ago. I talked to you guys about it before, but. You know, I was really excited about this, and there was we had a, a sick ass group. You know, we had an engineer, we had a sales team behind it, we had a, a VC behind it, like, and we had created these chairs. And this was way before, um, you know, this was like when people were like really just starting to talk about core. This was like when I, you know, you talk about Paul Check and the physio ball and stuff. I mean, that was really just kind of coming around um, in the early two thousands for me in, in, in the industry. And, you know, the importance of the core and, and paying attention to posture and like sitting in these chairs, what it was doing to us and, you know, coming up with this idea, like, you know, how could we make this <clears throat> office chair that still is comfortable like a real office chair, but then it has these uh, posture benefits you know, it was ergonomical and it had this, you know, instability in the shaft with a 15 degree play all in 360 degrees. So at all times they had to kind of stabilize their core. And we had all these like, so like active sitting. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we had all these, we'd mapped out like how many extra calories that you would burn per day and how that would be beneficial and got into the whole like health, healthcare. And then, you know, your people will be this much fit. I mean, we had all this great stuff. I was so excited and, and had so much belief in, in where it was going to go. And the market wasn't ready. The market wasn't ready for us. And, you know, and, you know, you talk about the Ted talk you know, that we watched a, a long time ago about how timing is everything. Right. And yeah, you got beat to the market with that. No, we were first to market. We were way it's early. Price point, right? Yeah. Price point and the timing. We were ahead of the, we were ahead of the market. We were too early. It mm. was, uh, people weren't ready for that. It wasn't a priority yet. We, you know, and probably, I think it was like five, six years later, they came out, somebody created like this, really ugly looking, 
you know, stability ball that was inside like a chair that was on wheels. But it was cheap. Yeah, it was cheap. It was way cheaper than ours. It was like 40 or 50 bucks. Mm -hmm. And we our chair was going to be like two, three hundred dollars, which so that's when I when I look at your tool, I know the amount of money in it that you've put into it to make it so badass is uh, the price point is really hard, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what I when I look at it, I go like, man, I wonder if, if there's anything that will make it a slow start, I think it'll be not because it's not fucking revolutionary or amazing. It's the timing in the market, and is the market that's always is, the, the, is the market ready for? And that's always the that's thing. Always the risk. Yeah, yeah that's always the, the that's like the biggest. Well, because like, you're the pioneer, uh, no. right? So if, if you're the pioneer, you have to take on those risks. If you're the spearhead, right? Mm -hmm. If you're trying to create the market, that's why it's always easy to tail end on that. And right? there's a, and there's a lot of examples of people who stepped in and. You know who's gonna you know who's gonna spend you know, five dollars on a cup of coffee? I mean, mm -hmm. seriously, just think about that for a second. When Starbucks came into America, people were spending fifty cents on a fucking cup of coffee. Here comes this company that's like, here's some gourmet coffee. You're gonna spend five dollars on a cup. Everybody, every market analysis would have said that they were absolutely fucking insane. And of course, now we we see how big Starbucks is. So mm -hmm. it's one of those almost impossible things to predict mm -hmm. sometimes sometimes you just go in and, and you're like oh this is brilliant and the market says no, no it's, it's not it's better to be lucky than good and just be honest <laughs> yeah. you know what i'm saying at the end of the day we all know that yeah. but i think there's there's smart strategies as a business uh of course person that you take going into those and I, that was a huge learning lesson for me uh it's the reason why i gave the the tip to erica fit love when she was here that you know, something that uh, being an a serial entrepreneur and many, many businesses that I've been a part of and uh, lots of failures is, you know, learning to love my ideas, but not marry them, you know, because you because like you can hear it in Justin's voice, he talks about his passion behind it. And like you got it. You if it's going to be successful, you have to be passionate. You have to be bought yeah. in. You have yeah. to be all in. But then at what point do do does it's a flip the, of the coin though? Yeah, because like if you don't have that passion, then people aren't going to believe in in what you're presenting. If you don't believe in what you're presenting, yeah. why would other people? It, you know, like, it's the bane of being an artist and a. I understand where you're going with this because you're trying to challenge the fact that you know there there's always a, a you know an opposite side to the coin. There's always going to be a risk for failure. There's that shit is is there regardless and. You know that's that's what prevents people from really pursuing things. And well, I think I think less of like it being a failure is and and thinking like that, and more of like how do I pivot, right? Like how do I like uh, how do I take something? Like, I mean, let's be honest, Mind Pump was a pivot. Mm -hmm. I mean, sure we had you know this vision and idea, but where we're at and what it looks like and what it's un what's unfolding. It's not what we necessarily. It's not. Ex know. It's not necessarily exactly what we thought. Yeah, we've pivoted. Like just to be clear, we've pivoted mm, three times already. Mm. Yeah. So we've already pivoted from talk about that. What, it, what, what, yeah. Yeah, what did you start off, and then what was the first pivot? And right. So the the, the first thing that we did, and I'm just going to be clear, and I don't I don't know if my partner's okay with this or not, but I haven't been able to talk about any of this because you know. I work with a lawyer and she's, you know, very um, measured as far as like what what we can put out there and say and, um, you know, like the both benefit and, and detriment to me is that like I got a big mouth as far as like I don't I don't want to like I don't hold secrets very well. Mm. And so this has been very challenging for me. As we know. <laughs> so, I, you know, I know I'm, way too much. about. I'm you. pretty honest. And, uh, you know, for me, like. We were we were pursuing this first idea that um, it all it all started out with um, this exercise. So if I was twisting with a rubber band and I had my client, uh, I was holding the rubber band for my client. Oh, that's she right. Originally, it, it was like a band with like a uh, yeah yeah. I remember so that. that's right. So she so it was like a trunk twist, right? So she twists, <laughs> and now I pulled uh, the rubber band while she stabilized. So. Basically, there's just increasing resistance with while you're stabilizing. Yeah, so you're stabilized. So, like, we actually built a machine that um, it, it mechanized this process. Mm. So, as she would stabilize doing something like that it type would of add exercise, more and more it would more, and then you could program this this type of force as mm. far as like creating that um, that strength curve by adding resistance uh, <laughs> where it was most maximal to do that or most beneficial to do that, and then and then letting up. So, you know, it had the safety component to it, but then it also challenged you at your at your strongest point. Mm -hmm. So anyway, great idea. We were going to add that as an accessory to like a free motion or a cable machine. And uh, we had it all figured out. Like, um, you know, we, they, our engineer built it, all that kind of stuff. 
What, what happens? We go even further and further. We invest money uh, and we run into a problem. There's somebody that has a patent that literally like goes all the way through. You read through the whole thing and like, oh my God, did this guy just live in my head? And he, ah, that sucks. he patented the whole thing, intellectual property wise, but never produced it. That right? sucks. You never that. produced it. So it's just sitting there. So anyway, so what do we do? We have to pivot. Well, you know what? Am I just going to fucking say, oh, I quit. I'm done. No, I, I, I honestly was like pretty, I was pretty shattered by that, you know, cause it was, it was totally like, I thought that was the idea, you know, and I thought that was it. And I kind of, I kind of let the dust settle and, and reevaluated. And we had another idea that just came to me and, uh, you know, I pursued that and, uh, somebody had a like kind of product and we were going to go back and forth with them as far as like, Oh, maybe we can license this from them. And then, you know, we'll actually produce it because they're not doing a good job business wise with producing it. And, uh, and then I was like, nah, I just, I wasn't, and I kind of backed off of all the idea of it. And thankfully my partners were flexible enough to, um, still believe in a lot of these ideas that I've had, like, cause I got a ton of them, but, um, you know, not all of them are amazing. Uh, but I, then this, this idea came with the stick after I was, um, pressing this stick and really like, you know, getting into the, the simplicity of it. I was like, wow, this is so simple. Um, you know, like stick mobility is so simple because I can orient my body. This gives me a guideline to then, to then get into a position where now I can tangibly kind of figure out where I am in space because I have a stick to kind of measure this spot is that made yoga more easy, easily accessible for me. Mm. And, and then I really got into the mobility of it and what they're trying to do with the muscle tension. And, and, uh, and I really started to understand that. And then that sparked the idea for me. And then that really, I was like, wow, you know what? You know what? There isn't, there isn't a way for me to tangibly, uh, you know, get feedback and, and understand how much force I'm, I'm able to produce. Well, it's the first tool that really quantifies isometrics. Right. Right. I mean, there's, I don't know any other tool that mm. actually quantifies there, it. There really isn't. And so that, so there's opportunity there. <clears throat> and so, you know, like I, I kind of re, re, like uh presented this to my to my partners and and they're like yeah okay like i don't know maybe you know because we we're kind of leery as far as what's out there you know maybe there's something already out there because we ran into that problem and we just we just did our research and we we actually went to i mean i went to professors at like uc davis you know i was like how long was this process from beginning to now uh, probably about three years Wow. Well, yeah yeah i don't think uh, that's a lot of work man it's, it's a, a lot of work. It's a lot dude. of work. It's yeah. a lot of stress. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, during that period, um, do you find yourself trying to optimize your body and health to be able to manage that along with everything else? Yeah, um, yeah. And some things have gone to the wayside a bit, mm -hmm. um, and I and I recognize that. Um, you know, I've I've a very bad teeth grinding uh, problem, and mm -hmm. and that's increased. Has and, it really? Yeah. You know, you know why I'm bringing this up because, uh, and this is what a great segue, um, kind of our conversations reminding me of uh, a subject that I think I don't think we've really covered in detail, um, and you know the process of starting a new business or, you know, process of like I went through a divorce, you know, over over a year ago, or you know changes, moving, you know, dealing with kids or whatever. Um, or even your workouts, you know, trying to get stronger, trying to build muscle, burn body fat. Uh, we, I think, and I, I'm guilty of this up until rather relatively recently, is mm -hmm. that we don't understand what human op optimization means, what how to optimize your body. What we understand as optimization typically is amplification. Like, mm. I need more energy. It'll ramp you up, not necessarily uh, it, what's ideal. Right. So, like, I'll give you an example. Like, let's say I'm working – a bunch of hours. Um, you know, I'm just stressed out. I'm doing lots of work. Body's gotta, burnt. First thing you do is I'm reach for some caffeine or a stimulant. That's instead. it. So I'm just trying to amplify, push myself to have more and more energy. And I had this realization, and I've had it in stages. Like I, I understand this through. I understood this through uh, exercise uh, first, and then through food. And now I'm getting it. I'm understanding it through supplements and uh, you know other things that I put in my body. And that's that the human body 
does such a good job at performing when you understand how to balance it, not when you try to amplify it and push it mm-hmm. in one. Per- if, if, in fact, if you do that, you'll get the opposite. You'll get worse performance and you'll get problems. Like we interviewed Erica uh, Erica Lugo, or otherwise known as Erica Fitlove, and she talked about her how her body rebelled and she had autoimmune issues because she was pushing herself so much with her job and you know more stimulants and more you know less sleep and more work and her body rebelled. Um, and you know something came up to me the other day uh, along those regards where you know we've got a lot of stuff going on. We're trying to work a lot. My sl- I'm not sleeping quite as much, and I'm going to go to the gym and lift heavy, and I'm going to drink more coffee because I need more energy than I normally do. And I'm going to take these supplements that are supposed to give me more energy. And then I realized, like, wait a minute, what if I, instead of doing those things, what if I tried to balance my body out by doing the opposite? So everything is always up here super amplified because of the stress and work. What if I could manipulate other factors and bring it down so I can kind of give myself more balance? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I, I love this topic. Yeah. Because this has been something, and I, it's so neat. Because we all we all are definitely uh, as much as we're a lot alike. We're in different parts of our journey, and uh, same journey but different parts. Yeah, right? exactly, different parts, and uh, you know, each of us have you know different levels of awareness in different areas, and it's it's this it's this beautiful synergy with all of us. So, you know, I, when you brought this up and you started sharing about, it, I was like, oh man, this totally reminds me of. You know, I used to say that, um, you know, you could always tell by uh, where I was financially based off of what my body looked like, because uh, what I'm really good at is like burying my head into something and just fucking tunnel visioning it and seeing it through executing. Right. And, and I used to really treat my health and fitness the same way as I would treat my, you know, building a business where you know, it was either or it was like, I would, you know, I, I just didn't have enough to give to the other side because I was grinding this much. And, and because of that, I would like revolt almost like, for example, what I would do is I would, you know, Oh, starting this new company. Right. And it would just be everything's business. And man, I would just get out of shape. You know, I would, I would just eat what didn't matter. I was driving through fast food because I was working. I'm working. Because you're trying to amplify. You're thinking time. I need more time to do yes. this work and I need more yeah. stimulants and I need more. Yeah. I was prioritizing this, 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 this way. Right. And then, you know, and then whatever business gets built, I'm making good money. And then I would pivot over to, okay, it's time to get Adam in shape, you know, and it would be so focused on that. And then all of a sudden I'd see these dip financially for myself and it would be, this constant struggle and battle that I used to share with people that I'm trying to figure this, this balance out. And part of it was driven through my insecurities because when I, in the past, when I thought about working out, it was like, it was so aesthetically driven. It was so about me, you know, having six pack abs or building arms or building a chest. I needed to look a certain way. And that took a lot of work, a lot of discipline, a lot of effort And it would just take away from my effort towards the new priority, which was making money and building this business. So I really struggled with that. And Mind Pump played a major role in me evolving beyond that and realizing that, wow, like my my fitness goal can also change as my my business goals change. Yes, it's a tool. Yes. And so... And what I've learned to, and it's funny you were bringing this up right now because literally I just ran into somebody out the door who was next door at the CrossFit, and he knows me, and he's like, "Hey, are you are you losing a bunch of weight right now? Like you look really you look really lean compared to where you normally." I'm like, "Yeah, you know, I'm like I'm heavily focused on mobility right now, and I'm I'm you know flexing my brain, like I'm working like there's other parts of my health and fitness that I'm I'm doing, and it's things that are more complementary to my heavy workload right now." And instead of me just fa- saying, fuck it, I'm not going to do anything for my health and fitness and just, you know, you know, drink crazy amounts of caffeine and shitty food and like bury my life into business. I've learned to do things now. Like now, uh, actually, a whole week of working out could actually be meditating one day, stretching another day, a long walk and a hike, reading a, well, you know, listening to an audible book. Like, because it's uh, you're, what you're doing is you're optimizing. Like, I just, so what I've been doing is for myself, because I've been under like lots of work, you know, organizing my household right now, because, you know, I've got the dual custody with the kids and I moved rather, you know, relatively recently. And what I was doing is I was, I was drinking more and more coffee. So I was getting more and more stimulant and my workouts were heavy and hard. And I was finding that I just wasn't feeling 
optimal. And so what do you do? You typically push those things even harder. Like yeah. I need more energy. I need more. When you're just hammering yourself even more when you're already stressed to the, to the gills. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So now, so what I've done is I'm reducing, first of all, caffeine is a very potent, uh, let's just talk about caffeine for a second. It's a very potent drug. It is a drug and it's a very potent one and it can be utilized uh, to optimize your performance in many different ways. If my lifestyle was, let's say I was like a multimillionaire, didn't have to work, I'd wake up whenever I want, I could totally relax, basically just have like this dream life where I could do whatever I want and kind of be lazy. Well, drinking a lot of caffeine would be beneficial because it would get my up, get my ass up off the couch or to do stuff and keep me motivated because I'd have to be driven through other other ways, right? And because my life is so relaxing. Well, if you flip that and you think that you've got this amped life, the stress life, lots of shit that's going on, well, caffeine now can do the opposite. Now, all it's doing is it's hammering that even more and you start to get some detrimental effects. You get more anxiety, more paranoia, you get body twitches, you get cold, hot flashes, you get all these different symptoms. So what I've done is I've dramatically reduced my caffeine and I'm, I've boosted up my intake of relaxing substances like chamomile tea. I'm having chamomile two or three times a day or I'm having some passion flower uh, you know, throughout the day. Um, my workouts, I'm still having some heavy workouts, but a lot more of them are more based on mobility, stretching, relaxation. I'm meditating regularly. So basically what I'm doing is I'm looking at my life and I'm saying, how can I use the tools that I know how to use, nutrition, supplements, and exercise to optimize my life? And think of it in terms of balance. Don't think of it in terms of you know, amplifying what you're already trying to do. So if my life, my life goal right now is to maximize my business, which requires lots of energy, lots of intensity, lots of work, then what I need to do is I need to use those tools of supplements, food, and exercise in a way that will bring that down. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is, what you need to realize is your body and your mind are capable of so much more than you realize. They're capable of amazing feats if you work with them if you work against them, you will crash and burn. You will suck. Again, and, and again, using the opposite. If I have this lifestyle where I'm totally relaxed and things are awesome and I don't need to worry too much, if I throw on top of that relaxation herbs, more meditation, more sleep, I'm just going to become fucking lazy. Like I'm just going to sit around and be this lazy person because I'm not balancing those two things well, out. Well, this is why I love to... I love training the type A business woman or man that's in their 30s to 50s and that are like super financially driven. I mean, to me, I, I totally connect and identify with that person. And that was a major paradigm shift for me in my health and fitness journey. And I feel like I can speak to that so well. And I've helped so many people be able to realize it because it's very tough because when you're a type A person like that and a grinder, go getter, whatever you have you've probably been pretty successful a majority of your life using that you know that mentality and so you approach almost everything in your life that way and those are the most challenging clients and people to get that to get that to, uh, through to them and get them to understand that you know what you because know, it's not intuitive to them they're thinking what do you mean you want me to relax like i got all this shit to do i need to just go 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 you know, you're telling me that I need to do yoga, meditate and do workouts. Well, not only that, there's a lot. And like what I brought up, there's a there's a lot of insecurities that are going on. Probably, you know, most people. I mean, let's be honest with ourselves. Uh, majority of us are driven to get in shape from our insecurities. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, yeah. I've, I, I can I can count on one hand in my career how many people like hired me and just said like, you know, I just want to create a more balanced, healthy lifestyle. Yeah, Adam, never can, can you help me? Like, no, it's always like this, you know, aesthetic or physical thing that or a thing they need to accomplish. That's a goal why they hire you. And it's like, you know, help me get here faster, harder, you know, quicker, better. That's like how people come after. And that's all driven from our insecurities of not feeling comfortable with how we look or how we view ourselves or whatever it may be. And so that those same insecurities drive right into how we approach this balance. And, you know, when I learn to, you know, work with my body and start to let it start to uh, mirror my workouts and my nutrition based off of my workload and what I was doing outside and my relationships and everything else, uh, it was amazing how much easier 
it is to stay in shape. You know, instead of these like streaks where I'm hella in good shape and then way out of shape, really in good shape, then way out of shape. It's like this nice, consistent, you know, uh, wave or flow that I, I've I've learned to get my body in. And a lot of that, though, for me, for me personally, is uh, learning to be OK with the insecurities, learning to be OK with. Sure, I'm not, of course, I'm not training seven days a week right now, an hour plus, and, you know, making sure I'm hitting 4,000, 5,000 calories right now. So I'm not the biggest I've ever been. I'm not the strongest I've ever been right now. But shit, look, look at the other things though right now. I'm sleeping better than I ever it's had. A, it's I'm, optimization. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm knocking books out like crazy. I'm, you know, my, rela my relationships with my family and my friends are so, at some of the all time highs. Like, I mean, fucking A. Like, you have to learn to look at it as a whole. And that's what that's what I mean by optimization. Like let's let's flip that on its head and let's say that you had a competition that you had to show up for or you had something where you had to get super super aesthetically fit, right? Well, you could do that also and you could optimize your life for that also, but how would you optimize your life? Well, you would look at you, you'd know that it would take a shit ton of time, lots of intensity, uh everything's going to be kind of up at that high level in that regard, so then you have to optimize the other side of your life. Well, you know, then I'm not going to be able to work as hard or throw as much intensity into that. I'm going to have to optimize those things to focus on this goal. And that's, that's all I'm saying is when you have your ultimate goal, you have to learn that the, your entire life communicates, uh, every section of your life communicates with each other. Whether it's your work, your sleep, your relationships, your thoughts, your workouts, your nutrition, all those things communicate with each other. Yep. And if you're trying to optimize one portion of it, you have to use all the others as tools to optimize that. And I know it's intuitive to think, you know, I, I'm tired. I need more energy. So I'm going to do all these things that amplify me to give me more energy, like drink more caffeine and take more stimulants and, you know. Well, you say intuitive. I wonder if that's more bad habits and the insecurities that drive us. Well, out, it right? is. Right? It is. But people would think like, wait, you know, I'm tired and you want me to, you know, you don't want me to drink more coffee? Yeah. To them, it sounds counterproductive. It, it sounds counter. But the irony is you'll actually get more energy and become more productive if you learn how to optimize your life by using these tools uh, as their, in, in their most effective effective way. Like, here's another example of something that I'm doing for myself. Again, because we've got all this stuff going on uh, outside of working out and nutrition, uh, I have this like see, the sleep sequence or schedule that I do now where, you know, 40 minutes or an hour before all the lights go down, I go by candlelight, I turn off electronics. It's like I'm really optimizing that rest you know, period, because I know that that's going to give me, optimize me for the stuff that's my focus on that, that I'm focusing on right now, which is my business. And that's really all you have to do is approach everything that way. Look oh, at you, you say that really easy, but it's a fucking it's a tough one. You know? It's a tough one. But that's, you, I think that's the first thing is letting people know that it's a monster. You know, it's a monster and you have to learn to be OK with, you know, fucking looking yourself in the mirror and saying like, you know, evaluating it. Is this, is this what's ideal for me right now? Um, you know, put aside like your insecurities, put aside like these crazy goals that you've set your set for yourself and ask, you know, and I, I, you, I love giving like car analogies because I feel like, you know, the car has got so many different systems and parts to it that make it run efficiently like the body, you know, mm -hmm. and people just become so hyper focused on one part of the body that it's like, that's so silly to think that like you could have the best engine and best tires, but if you don't have a fucking steering wheel, good luck winning the race. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, and that steering wheel seems so cheap and simple, but it's such an intricate part to the whole car running efficiently and the body. Dude, I, I just don't think people realize just how effective they can be. Like, like what you're saying makes perfect sense. Right. But people don't understand it. The science supports it. I mean, you have the military now uh, at high levels investing millions and millions of dollars on on optimization and a lot of it is in balancing the body you know when they're trying to teach navy seals a new language because they're about to go in a new country they can cut the time no, that they have to this learn is, this is some stealing fire I'm so, i love book. i love that you're reading this right well, now well they can cut the time that they, so they, they fascinating. so normally it would take someone let's say 6 months to learn a language so they can go communicate it they can cut it down to 6 weeks by implementing things like meditation and float tanks like not more language training. Do you, do you, let's 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 step back for a second. Okay, it's so every, everybody can understand that. Here you have highly trained multi-million dollar uh, uh, soldiers because they, they they do cost us a lot of money to train and some of the best training, and we need them to learn 
a new language because we're about to put them in, a, in a, new, a new region in the world. And time is of the essence, okay? And the fastest that we're able to do it is about six months. Now, those of us who are not in the know, we would say, well, shit, if we want them to learn more, we're just going to hammer them more language lessons. We're going to immerse them even more. It's like 24 hours a day learning this new language. It doesn't work that way. They can, the, the most they can get out of them is about six months to where they're satisfied with how, how the well they learn the language. So what they did was is they had these experts come in and look at how the brain learns, look at how the body's optimized, and they said, no, we're not going to hammer them with more language learning. What we're going to do is spend some time on meditation and float tank. Float tanks have been shown to uh, you know, maximize you know, brainwave activity to where you learn more. So it's basically these relaxation techniques. They implemented these with the SEALs, and they cut the learning time from six months to six weeks. Well, and it makes so much sense from what you're saying right now, too, is like you, you take these high-level, high-intensity, you know, super high stress, what these guys are doing is life or death, and thinking that, hey, let's try and cram more or push would be the better. Actually, no, finding time to be more recuperative or do things that are meditative that are going to really enhance this learning process. And to, that, that those numbers are just, it blew me yeah. away when I read that. I tell you, I'm telling you, dude, if, if you, uh, if you optimize your body in that way, if you understand, cause I'm experienced, by the way, uh, you know, I've, I've done this through stages. Like, you know, I started learning it through exercise. So I started changing my workouts a little mm -hmm. bit to, to work around, you know, what's going on with my life. And then it was my sleep and then it was my diet. And the last thing now is I'm really learning how to utilize stimulants properly. Cause I can overdo caffeine to a certain point and I'm pretty well, I'm pretty aware of when I need to back off, but it's usually too late. Like I back off when it's too late, right? Now I'm understanding. And by the way, cannabis is one of these things. Like right now, I don't need lots of stimulation, uh, outside stimulation, because I'm already so stimulated. Cannabis uh, is a, is a uh, something that can be both either a stimulant or it can be recuperative and relaxing. And it, it, you can use it either way. Like I can smoke cannabis and there's certain depending on the strain for the most part it's not only the strain but it's the dose like if i want to create like if we're going to go create a new program i want it to be stimulating so we're going to smoke it and we're going to smoke a lot of it and we're going to get real creative and but it makes me exhausted afterwards like my body gets worn down it's a stimulant at that point if i have a little bit like where it's almost sub perceptual to where i feel it just a little bit and that's about it and it's usually an edible it's usually a small edible then it becomes more recuperative. Any more than that, it becomes a stimulant. So what I'm doing is I'm learning how to use this tool for what I need it for. Mm -hmm. And at this point, it's not, I don't need the stimulation. I need the recuperative abilities. Caffeine is, is one of those as well. I can have a little bit. It's like green tea versus coffee. Yeah, or, 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 or just a little bit versus a lot. Um, Exercise is like that as well. Uh, stretching is, I can make, st stretching can be stimulatory too, or it can be recuperative and, and resting. Uh, and so basically you're looking at all these things and you're just trying to yeah. balance your body out so that your body can do, can work its optimal well, that's way. That's the evolution. I mean, that's the evolution of our thought process. Even when we go to approach, a, a programming for fitness or programming for nutrition, um, you know, you name it, it, it really, it, it amounts to optimizing, uh, that particular area. And, and a lot of times you have to consider both ends, like when to, to add in more intensity, when to kind of pull back and when, you know, how to navigate your body through that process, uh, in order for, for you to get the maximal amount of benefit from it. So now th th there's a formula to that. And it's funny because it's, it's easy for us to say it, right? But it's yeah. even, it's, it's, it's really hard to apply. It's it. hard yeah. to apply it to yourself. Cause I was good with clients on this, by the way, I was a fucking expert oh, at yeah. balancing people out. I've been doing that for 12 years. For myself, it's like, I mean, I tell you what, man, looking at yourself, you are blinder than fuck when it comes to looking at yourself. You're super great at looking at other people. I mean, you're going through it right now, right, Justin? You're talking about your product. Yeah. About, no, it, are, are, it's, it's a very high intensive period of stress. And, and uh, are you, is there, are you scheduling or is it random or, you know, are you randomly doing things or is it like a part of your life right now where you're trying to, balance yourself uh, you know, out? No, I literally am scheduling an intense period, a, a peak period where I know that um, 
Like I, there's an end in sight. So there's, there's an end, but at the same time, I'm trying to, to do recuperative things like you're mentioning with focus on mobility, with focus on, uh, like in the car, I, like you even mentioned that you were listening to more classical music. Yeah, that's a good point. And, yeah. uh, that the, it's so ironic, I've been doing the same thing. Um, but mainly just because it gets me in a better frame of mind where, uh, I don't have like I don't have the intensity co like compounding because my thoughts are very intense. Right yeah, you're now. not playing rage in the, yeah. against the machine in the <laughs> yeah. car. Yeah, I mean it's just like. <sighs> do you yeah. find this is an area that you're you do really well, or is this an, a struggle for you? Uh, it depends. It depends. Like uh, like I think we struggle in our own ways. I definitely. think I, I definitely see. struggle. I definitely struggle. I mean, there's there's a. Uh, do you do you have you tried uh, actually sitting down and. Like meditating, have you tried doing that consistently? No, it's no, I have not. I could and see you having a, like I could see you uh, you having trouble with that for very, sure. Very much so, and I, the only way I've been able to somewhat mimic that is to to walk and to get out and to mm. be by myself. And I haven't had a moment to myself in so you probably done like that. three months. Yeah, so, yeah, it is. It's, so he, it's compounding. So try this. So I've been doing this and it's a fucking pain in the ass for the first week that you do it because you just, it's just, I know guys like us, we don't like to sit still and you're worse than I am. <laughs> uh, but what I've been doing is in the morning when I wake up, cause that's when it hits me the most when I wake up and it's like, gotta do this, gotta do that. Gotta, is, uh, I have a separate area that I go to and, uh, I play some real quiet music and I, or I can do brain FM or whatever. And it just 10 minutes, mm -hmm. that's it. Mm -hmm. Just 10 minutes. I sit there and I focus on my breath. I focus on my breath. I focus on being present. It's just 10 minutes. It's like pulling fucking teeth when I first did it. And now it's kind of a routine and it's only 10 minutes. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not that big of a deal. And I swear to God, dude, it's making a huge difference. <laughs> oh, I think I I'll even regress it further back and make a big difference. I think you do that 10 times. If you yeah. do the box breathing 10 times, it takes me, like I can feel my I, heart be go. I like this as a challenge though. You know, like I know. It, you have to schedule it. I'm just it telling takes, you right now, you ain't going to yeah, do it if it's not like, scheduled. I mean, it's obvious to you guys, obviously, right? Yeah. Like I look like I'm a fucking nightmare right now. Like, no. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> like, like it's like obvious, but uh, like I do. Oh, you still look handsome to me. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. But yeah, like I know this is definitely an area I need to like, pursue on top of uh you know just like just the amounting and that's see that's the, the see that's the thing that's where i was for the last year dude is yeah. that i was thinking to myself god this is something else i have to do because and i'll tell you why like my girlfriend's like a meditation like that's her thing like yeah she understands all that right and she'd been telling me for the last year and what goes in my head is more work one more fucking thing i gotta yeah. schedule like one more thing i gotta do like i'd rather just not even think about it right i'm telling you bro all you gotta do it's not more it's actually less i yeah. promise you it'll actually make everything less all you gotta do is schedule fuck it five minutes or like adam said 10 box with do it like at a particular time of day, every day. It's probably best for the first thing in the morning when, before everybody wakes up. Uh, and do it like every day, five minutes, ten minutes. It sounds stupid. And uh, since I started doing it, then it, now it made me look at, like I said, my coffee, the kind of herbs I take. my sleep. It's like all started to add up and it's all kind of been effortless. And I feel like, bro, I can't even explain to you. I feel like compared to how I felt before, like a million dollars. Like my yeah. energy is like... I'm not stimulated in energy. I just have this clean, <laughs> happy, nice feeling energy. It's really yeah. fucking insane. And it hit me like a ton of bricks. Like all I got to do is work with my body because my body's pretty amazing. It'll do some shit if I work with it. If I work against it, uh -uh, I'm running uphill, man. It becomes like this impossible, uh, you know, this impossible feat. And we've seen it with clients. I yeah. mean, how many times have you had a client come in who's – like Adam was saying, type A, who all they want you to do is to put oh, them in the Oh, I'm the best at, at servicing those type of clients. But it, it, like you mentioned before, it's like it, it's internalizing that and like applying it to yourself is like that's a whole nother challenge because like I'm so much about everybody else like uh, around me that a lot of those things like you, you, you conceptually like I totally agree. Like, I'm like oh, yeah, of course, that's, that's what I need to do. But it's just like it doesn't even like enter my frame of thought a lot of times because I, I let everything else really penetrate my thought process of like, dude, but I have all this, I have this, I have, it's another thing. Mm -hmm. Like you said. It's well, not only like, that, but when it does, it comes from a bad place when it eventually does. For yeah. example, like- That's a this, great point. This is normally how it happens. It's like, 
you're trucking along, you're building your businesses, you got all kinds of stuff on your plate, you got your kids, you know, wives getting sick, you got all this stuff on your plate. And then like you, you catch a glance at yourself in the mirror and you go like, fuck, I don't feel good. Or you look at yourself and you're like, or you see this, you put on a shirt or a pair of pants that, you know, don't, don't fit the same way, or you don't look the way you like to look. Or you lift and your strength goes Yeah, down. or That's exactly. Or you go to do a workout know, and, you, and you had to regress by hell away and you just, and so all of a sudden the switch that makes you go like, fuck that, I'm going to fix this is driven from an insecurity and it normally leads you in the wrong direction. Exactly. That's exactly what happens. Then you, then you, that same intensity, you apply it towards, cause you're pissed. Yep. You're pissed off that, you know, whatever slipped or, you know, or you, you didn't do what you were supposed to or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's the exact opposite. It is. It's the exact opposite. <laughs> way. You know, I had this go through my oh, irony. I had this go through my mind because, uh, on, uh, so Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, I do my heavy, foundational workouts <clears throat> and then tuesdays thursdays saturdays and sundays i'll do my you know my frequency enhancing type things like either my trigger session or focus session or mobility session type stuff and what i did what i, I made a decision a couple weeks ago and i said this is when it really was starting to hit me and i said you know what what i really need isn't something that's going to make me push my body to build more muscle and strength what i need is on tuesdays thursdays saturdays and sundays I am going to do something that's totally recuperative. And I don't mean sleep and rest. Uh, because That can be too, but that's more of an extreme. Like you know when you need to rest, right? And usually by that point, it's too late. I need to do something like yin yoga. Or I'm going to sit here and I'm going to stretch in the dark for 30 minutes. And immediately what pops through my mind is, but I'm going to lose strength. I'm going to lose muscle. Like what's going to fucking, uh, you know, I can't do that. I need to throw in some trigger sessions. I need to throw in some focus sessions. Like I can't just stretch and, and do that kind of shit. And you know what's funny? Uh, for Am I losing muscle? I don't think so. In fact, and, and by the way, this can't be your motivation. So I'm very weary now. I'm very careful of how I view this. Yeah, that shouldn't even matter to you. It's You're right. I'm noticing I'm stronger in the gym. However, I'm going to caution you. <coughs> if you go into this with that being your mentality, yeah, you're already failing. Dude. You're failing. Yeah. If you go into it thinking I'm going to relax so I can so that I can work harder or I'm going to relax so that I can build more muscle, you're actually not yeah, you're, you're actually not balancing your you're body. You're looking out. at the wrong markers. The markers that you should be assessing is like what I was saying earlier is, you know, pay attention to your relationships, how you're communicating to the ones you love and how's your sleep. How's your, you know, are you getting headaches? How's your energy levels throughout the day? How's your skin? How does, you know, how do all these other things that, you know, these other markers that are really important, if you're going to be effective, you're going to crush business, you're going to fucking kill it in this world. Like those other things have got to complement that. Mm -hmm. And, and those things show, so what? You're not fucking deadlifting what you were deadlifting six months ago. So fucking what? So what? You don't look like you were ready to get on stage like you did last year. So what? Ask yourself about all the other things and learn to look at that. If if you go into it with the mentality of, oh, if I listen to what you know the boys were saying and I start doing this, I wonder if this this is the answer for me and then I'm going to be stronger or I'm going to look better. I'm like no, 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 it's no. coming from the wrong place. It is. It's the wrong place. And I know we sound like a bunch of crunchy hippies right now. It's I. It's but there's there's uh, levels of this, right? So it doesn't necessarily mean that you know you need to assess yourself and go like, oh my god, this is me one extreme to the other extreme now. It's like, well, maybe this is just a, a sign for you that you're 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 hammering a little too much and, and maybe just pull back a little bit. Maybe you were getting addicted doing these double days and doing stuff like yeah. that. And it's just like and, and there's and there's there's some of you listening that need to do the opposite. There's some of you listening. Yeah, right. That let's, are, let's let's address those people yeah, too. There's some of you there's some of you listening. <laughs> some of you right fuckers now are lazy. That you go, you know, you go to class for two hours a day, you study a little bit, you sit around on the couch on your computer, you jerk off, you fucking eat shitty or eat you're, Cheetos you're sleeping, and watch Netflix yeah. and chill. All you day. need some intensity. Like that person needs to go to the gym, lift weights, needs to do you know, frequency enhancers like trigger sessions that some coffee is going to benefit them before their workouts. You know, they, they, that's, that's what they do to optimize their, their total body, right? That's their optimization. And well, I, you know, I want to be very clear here. Like when you optimize your body by use, by utilizing these tools in the right ways, you will feel so much better than if you're just, if you're pushing everything to build more muscle, more fat. So you know, get you want to get like what Adam's saying. Get that out of your head. The whole like, am I going to lose muscle? Am I going to still look? Who cares? You're going to feel so much better. It's I, there's no words to explain how much better you're going to feel when things become optimized. You literally feel zen. I can't explain like the way I feel right now versus two months ago or you know especially a year ago. 
it's on a it's on a completely different level and it's not because I'm pushing myself harder it's because I'm I'm starting to figure out how to use all these tools you're to, reprioritizing man to balance my body out and, and and the side effect that I'm noticing is my productivity is better I'm more creative you know I can actually do things a little more effectively I'm more organized I'm remembering things you know uh, whereas before I was more forgetful uh, it's really really crazy so that's that's I guess that's the message you know that we want to leave you with is Look at the whole thing and how do you counteract some of the negatives of things that are happening in your life? How do you balance yourself out versus how do you amplify and push everything in one direction? And even if you don't burn out, because I know some of you listening right now are thinking like, well, I'm, in, you know, I'm not going to like hurt myself. I'm not going to burn out. Like, I remember that was me in my 20s. Like, fuck it. Throw more caffeine. Throw some ephedra on there. I need less sleep. Like, let's go, go, go. Like, I'm not going to crash and burn. I'm a goddamn machine. Number one, you're not. You probably will crash and burn. But number two, if you don't, you're just not as effective. You're not nearly as effective. Like, why would you want to put, why would anybody want to put 10 hours of work into something that they could do the just they could do just as good a job if they were more efficient with two hours of work? That's literally what happens. It's not about the time and effort you put in, it's about the end result, the product. And if you if you're really focused on results, balancing out your body will do that better than anything. Quality over quantity. That's it. Listen, go to mindpumpmedia.com. 30 days of coaching for free, it's still available and it's still free. We're not charging for it yet. You go on there, you opt in, 30 days of coaching, incredible information. Anybody can get it absolutely for free. Also, go to YouTube. Turn this off. Don't stop listening to me. Go to YouTube. Check out our channel. A brand new video every single day. Subscribe. It's fucking awesome. It's actually been named one of the best fitness channels on YouTube in the world by Mind Pump. We actually <laughs> named it that. We had a contest and we won. Uh, you yeah. can also go to Instagram. The world has spoken. You can also go to Instagram. Find us there. Mind Pump Radio. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal. You can find the Zen and relaxing and amazingly balanced Justin Andrews at Mind Pump Justin. Oh, namaste, everybody. And you can find the uh, handsome in a different way now, Adam Schaefer <laughs> at, Man's, at Mind Pump Adam. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump. <laughs> <laughs>